So we've covered the captains of both Squad 1 and Squad 2, but we've already reached somewhat of a predicament with Squad 3, as there have been three captains that have held the position of Squad 3 captain. The first is Captain Gin Ichimaru, who holds the position of Squad 3 captain until he betrays the Soul Society alongside Aizen and Kaname. The second is a filler captain named Amagai, who attempts to fill the position of Squad 3, but was really just trying to get revenge on Yamamoto for killing his dad, and as most filler characters do, he <coughs> does die. And finally, there's the current captain of Squad 3, Rojoro Otorebashi, who has almost been killed like 95 billion times in his short tenure as a captain. So instead of picking who I'm going to cover, I'm going to cover Gin today on Wednesday and I'm going to cover Rose on Sunday. That way I cover all my bases and we really do make sure we get a nice thorough look at Squad 3. Amaga I'm going to be saving for later because I do plan on going over all of the filler characters at some point eventually, but I just don't feel like rewatching that entire filler arc right now. But if you enjoy this Bleach content that I put out on the channel, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe. And if you want to go that extra mile, consider clicking that join button and becoming a channel member today and getting access to hidden content here on the channel, such as past debates that I've uploaded, past live streams, and any debates that I will upload going forward in the future. With all that being said though, let's go ahead and jump right into this video, starting off with Gin in the Soul Society arc. Even in just the Soul Society arc, Gin was already quite the beast of a character. In his first introduction, we see him dragging off Kenpachi, a Kenpachi that is wanting to fight Byakuya. He's literally egging him on in battle. And yet, Gin is able to just tie him up and drag him away against his will. This is played for some laughs, but it's actually really impressive considering how powerful that Kenpachi still is. Although, it's also equally not all that impressive because it is still suppressed Kenpachi. And you can actually argue that Kenpachi got stronger in this arc, considering he had a near-death experience when he fought Shikai Ichigo. But this could actually be really impressive for Gen at the same time if you want to argue that either Kenpachi didn't get stronger during the arc, or the buff that he got is very negligible, because a suppressed Kenpachi with his eye patch still on was able to take on both Bankai Kaname and then was about to fight Bankai Sajin right after that. And if Gin can just casually with his own strength drag that Kenpachi off, that's already speaking very high volumes for his strength. Now we get onto Gin's actual like first combat showing and that's when he fights Jidambo and Ichigo. Well, fights, he more or less just cuts off Jidambo's arm and then swats Ichigo away. Keep in mind that Jidanbo is not actually weak. Uryu and the others thought they had to jump Jidanbo as a group as they were like that intimidated by him. And then that was then used as a way to demonstrate how much stronger Ichigo was than everyone else in the group because they thought they had to jump him. And yet Ichigo was able to take him on by himself. Now, what is equally impressive is then Gin being able to swat away that Ichigo because keep in mind, Kisuke says you might be around the level of a third seat but then Ichigo goes on to probably fight the strongest third seed he possibly could have fought in Ikaku, who's more of a captain candidate than he is a third seed, right? Because right after Aizen, Gin, and Kaname defect, Renji's like, dude, you should become a captain because you got a Bankai, like you got the skill, the expertise to do it. Now, I'm not saying that means Ikaku's a captain tier fighter, right? We can have that separate debate later, but it is rather impressive that that Ichigo goes on to fight probably the strongest third seed and then goes on to fight like one of the stronger lieutenants in Renji while he's still injured from his fight with Ikaku and yet Gin was still able to bat that dude away with little to no effort whatsoever. In fact, Yoroichi said that Gin would just completely put a stop to all of their plans, running into him like nobody in the group, even if they jumped him, could have taken him down. We also learn later on in the arc when we're on Sokyoku Hill and we've revealed the treachery of Aizen and everything, Gin actually makes an offhand comment that he did not stop Bankai Ichigo from reaching Sokyoku Hill, as he thought it wouldn't have been like a big deal or anything, but again, implying that Gin could actually just put a stop to Bankai Ichigo if he wanted to. Again, is very good in keeping Gin relevant in this arc because Bankai Ichigo is, you know, comparable to Byakuya, who's seen as one of the stronger captains in the entire Gotei 13. We also learn in this arc that Gin is like this prodigy god, and this may have just been an offhand mistranslated comment, but back in the past, when Aizen and Gin approach all the hollows to save all like the students that are getting attacked by the experimental hollows, they actually mention how they're both captains, despite Gin being a lieutenant under Aizen at that time, which might just mean that Gin was so godly 
that they considered him a captain while he was an assistant captain, which is really good. But finally, we have the most controversial bit probably of the Soul Society arc, and that is Gin's fight with Toshiro. People really seem to hate this, and I think it's because people don't really like Toshiro very much, and personally, I don't care for Toshiro very much either, but this isn't an anti-feat for Gin necessarily, because you could just argue that Toshiro's really strong in this arc. I mean, it's Toshiro who's a prodigy versus Gin who's a prodigy. Personally, I always viewed it as Toshiro is the prodigy that's still growing, but Gin is what Toshiro could grow up to be, as Gin is a prodigy who's reached their prime. But in all honesty, there's really nothing wrong with saying that Toshiro is just strong enough to fight Gin in that arc, considering the only other thing that Toshiro does in the arc is get one shot by Aizen, which Aizen would one shot 99.9% .9 of the people in that arc anyway, so it doesn't matter. You could also argue that Toshiro really doesn't damage Gin in their fight at all. Instead, he more or less tries to restrain him, and that's when Gin tries to pull out like a little rat move and stab Momo to try to get out of that. So you can argue that maybe Gin was feeling pressured and that's why he did that, but at the end of the day, we do actually see Gin cut Toshiro, but we don't see Toshiro actually do any damage to Gin unless you want to count him getting restrained or something as him doing damage. There's a few ways you could look at it, but yeah, Gin in the Soul Society arc is quite the beast. We move on to Fate Karakura Town, where his first showing is him cutting Hiori in half, which is a nice casual feat for him, I suppose, because Hiori's not necessarily weak. She's able to kind of scrap with Holly Bell, but it's not one of those Omega, whoa, this is a really powerful character type moments. What really shines is when he fights Bonkai Ichigo, and not just any Bonkai Ichigo, a post full holification holified Bankai Ichigo, who not only fought Yami and Ukiora, who no matter where you stand on the whole strong Sespada thing, Yami and Ukiora are the two candidates, right? So he tore Ukiora apart as a full hollow, and then obviously Ichigo's holification draws on that power. And while he was severely weakened, could barely use his holification, had like one third of his Bankai left, he was still actually capable of piercing Yami's skin. Now, Yami does make fun of him and say, oh, you just nicked me a little bit. But it's actually really impressive that Ichigo being that suppressed and that weakened is still actually able to damage Yami. And then when Ichigo reaches his full power, we see him almost chop base Aizen in half, you know, the same base Aizen that's stronger than all of the Espada combined. So if Ichigo was at full power, he probably would have just split Yami in half right then and there. And then that holified Bankai Ichigo gets dogged on by Gin. Now, in the manga, it's a little more even. When Gin initially uses his Bankai and like pushes Ichigo away, Ichigo fires a Getsuga. And in the manga, Gin actually bleeds, but in the anime, he just gets a little scuffed by it. So they made him just a little bit chattier in the anime where he's just walking through his Getsuga Tenchos, basically. And then also in the anime, we just blatantly see Gin disrespect Ichigo by cutting the mask off of his face. Whereas in the manga, that happens off screen. We see Ichigo holify and rush in to fight Gin. And then when we come back to their fight, Gin is kind of taunting Ichigo saying, wow, your holification is really not all that impressive. It doesn't last a whole lot and you were a lot scarier back in the past. So suffice to say, he's dogging on this Ichigo rather casual. And even in the manga where he does take damage, that's like the only point in which Ichigo has anything on him. He's basically getting bullied the entire time. But now we get into probably the most controversial point for Gin, and that is him scaling to third Fusion Aizen. This is the debate that's gonna be happening in the Bleach fandom till the end of time or until we get some sort of confirmation. Because what it really boils down to is do you think Aizen was on guard when Gin stabbed him? Because he blatantly says, yeah, like I always knew you were going to betray me, and I was just waiting for a point in which you were going to do it. And I wanted to see how you would do it, especially now that I'm this transcendent being. I still knew that you were going to make an attempt for it, but I never knew how you were going to do it. And you would think that Aizen would always be on guard around Gin, and especially when Gin grabs his Zanpak toe, which is Kyoka Suigetsu's weakness that Aizen has told to Gin, you would think immediately those are red flags rising up. You would think he raises his spiritual pressure or raises his guard or something along those lines. So there's a lot of evidence that points towards the fact that Aizen should have been on guard, but if you were going to argue that he wasn't, 
at the very least, Gin's poison still is capable of killing Aizen. And it wasn't even like, oh, it did some damage to third fusion Aizen. Like, it shut that dude down completely and killed him. So even if you want to argue that Aizen was off guard, and you know, that stab wound is that it's indicative of why he was on guard because it was so small. And that's the only amount of damage that Gin could do. The poison still killed the guy, and that's all that really matters. Gin's Bonkai Poison, let's go ahead and get into some of his abilities. Now, we don't really care about Gin's Shikai because it's basically an inferior version of his Bonkai. Although, interestingly enough, his Shikai might be capable of the same Bonkai Poison because when he stabs Aizen, he doesn't announce that he's using his Bonkai. He never calls it out, so he might A, be able to use the poison in Shikai, or B, Gin is such a prodigy god that he's able to use his Bonkai without announcing it and without like making it evident at all, which either one is really cool for me. But some things about his Bonkai, it's said to be the fastest Zanpak toe, and I don't know really how relevant that's going to be because there's not a lot of other Zanpak toes that focus on speed, but say that like Yamamoto throws a wave of fire out, does that mean Gin's Zanpak toe is faster than that? Because what happens if the person using the Zanpak Toe is faster than Gin? Is it just the Zanpak Toe in base, like itself, that's faster? Wouldn't that also need to mean that Gin is also pretty quick himself to use the fastest Zanpak Toe? I believe you could use that to try to scale Gin's speed, as he himself does have to track his Zanpak Toe and he does have to keep track of it to use it. So there might be some argument there that Gin is actually one of the faster Shinigami. Now he does say that it's 500 times faster than this clap, although we've kind of already had this discussion for like two years. Yes, you could try to argue that, oh, he's clapping and he's saying it's 500 times faster than sound or what makes a lot more sense going with a lot of the FTL scaling in the series, you could say it's 500 times faster than Gin himself can clap. Which again, considering that he might be one of the fastest characters in the series and high tier characters at this point are already well into FTL would make a lot more sense than it being 500 times faster than sound and being called the fastest Zanpak Toe. Now something you guys might not have known is that the Buto techniques where Gin actually holds the Zanpak Toe with both hands actually does have a purpose as these techniques actually make him a magnitude stronger. So it's like stacking a Bonkai inside of a Bonkai. It's very very good and actually does reveal the purpose of those techniques. It's not just some random things that Kubo threw in there for no reason. Finally there's his Bonkai which is like instantaneous cellular level destruction that activates as soon as Gin just says kill. He leaves a little piece of his Zanpak Toe inside of his opponent and then blows them up and they pretty much die instantaneously. It is really broken. It's very hacked. A little minor thing that he can do as well, he knocked out Rongiku with Hakufuku, which he just like smacked her and knocked her out. So if a fight is getting really difficult for Gin, he might just be able to like smack somebody and knock them out real quick. My boy does have the hands, but if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It really does help your boy out. Consider clicking that join button to go that extra mile in supporting the channel. My Discord and Twitter are linked in the description down below. Go ahead and give those a follow and a join. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice rest of your week. Peace. Late, guys.